Hey there guys, this is Biggie Doo reviewing the first ever episode of The X Factor. It's about time I got off my butt and started reviewing some stuff again. Um, I'm only going to go through the ones that uh, the judges voted through because it's a lot easier. I don't need to make fun of people that have already been, you know, humiliated in front of millions of people. <laughs> okay, so first off, Rachel Crow, 13. Uh, she's a young voice. Uh, not a bad start. I uh, love her personality. Uh, everyone loved her. She's a very happy girl. Uh, who, I don't know how this competition works. I know that the judges work with them somehow, but I don't know if there, there's got to be like some sort of Hollywood week, so they narrow it down some. Uh, yeah, uh, Tyrell Carter, or The Package, as uh, What's-Her-Face, the, the other girl, not Nicole, What's-Her-Face. Um, he's got a good R&B voice, you know, potential. Alana Santiago, 14 years old. I thought she was a little pitchy in some of those spots. Um, but it's, it's it more sounded like a nerve pitchy. Um, I don't know how she'll do in competition, like, down the road. Potential. Uh, John Lindahl, he's uh, 14, a little goofy dancing guy. Uh, the girl's going nuts for him. He's like a little chick magnet. He's like the little, he's like Grayson Chance's older brother, who's not his brother. Uh, Siamese, yeah, I think he should not have gotten farther. He's a freak show. Um, he, uh, wow, he could dance, so man, he could dance. But uh, he's no, he's not going anywhere. Okay, uh, Simone Battle, she's 21. I don't, I don't see the massive potential there that uh, the other people really saw. I don't think she'll make it. To, you know, it's just not a good enough voice. It's not a good enough voice. Uh, the really, Stacy Francis, 42, uh, this was my happy moment of the night, besides the first girl, Rachel Crow. Uh, she was awesome. It's a great, great R&B talent there. I did tear up a little, um, but uh, based on her voice, because I always skip the, the stories, because, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to get emotionally manipulated into thinking somebody has a better voice than somebody else because of a story behind them. Uh, the Seattle Oceans were mostly about, uh, you know, just not much going on there, okay? There was mostly bad, you know, people there that they showed. Uh, Marcus Canny, 21, really good Stevie Wonder type voice, uh, you know, and very talented kid. I was worried at the end he sounded like he was a little out of breath. I don't know if that was nerves or... You know, and when he fell to the ground, I thought he was having like an asthma attack or something at first. So I was like, oh man, but uh, he's definitely got a lot of talent, you know, like a like a Usher Bobby Brown hybrid, if you will. Uh, the answer, that's the only group we really saw that made it. Uh, we saw like, you know, a girls acapella group go, but uh, that's, that's the wrong show. That's the voice that they're supposed to be on, and they did some weird, bizarre song. But uh, the answer was pretty good. Um, There's some balance things, like with uh, dynamics between the all three all together. Um, I I don't know. I, I would have to hear like a, a cooler song, something that is not their own to really give them uh, a chance. I don't think, I don't know how it's going to work, I mean, how it'll play out. Uh, Chris Renee, another feel-good story, 28, just out of rehab. I hope that, uh, you know, at this time he's still out of, like, uh, doing really great for him and his son's sake. Uh, a very Jason Mrazzy sound quality of his voice, very urban, hip and cool, smooth, smooth, smooth. It's like butter. It's like butter. And um, those are what those are my opinions for this. Uh, I will be back tomorrow to do the next one. So uh, keep on watching, folks, and we'll see you soon. Bye.